Hello, hello, this is David Poindexter here. Um, so today I've uh, been doing a little bit of research on uh, progressive web apps, uh, PWAs, which you may have heard of by now. And, um, I, you know, I've been really thinking of, of PWAs in the context of DNN, um, what the future of DNN would be like uh, with PWAs as a first-class citizen, if you will, uh, within the context of DNN. So many of you are probably familiar with Andrew Heffling's uh, project for DNN vNext uh, prototype uh, that's on GitHub at uh, a Heffling, dnn.vnext. So what I've done is I have created a fork of this project over in the Envisionative uh, GitHub, which is also called DNN vNext. And I have created a branch called PWA-test. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to Visual Studio. I'm looking at the project in here, and I'll get some zooming going on. So this is the uh, this is the project um, here, um, as you would get from from Andrew uh, uh, from his fork. But uh, this has a few modifications. Um, and what I've done here is I've actually uh, made it uh, to where this entire application runs as a PWA. I really want to do this as a proof of concept. It's really just the beginning of this. Uh, definitely have a lot to figure out uh, moving from here, but uh, this was a, an interesting exercise that uh, was really nice to, to go through. So what I've done in this project uh, to get it to the state that it's in now is I have added a NuGet package from Mads Christensen. Uh, many of you are familiar with him. He's been uh, uh, the maintainer of Web Essentials for quite some time, and he has a NuGet package that allows uh, a service worker and the web app manifest, manifest to be able to work in ASP.NET Core projects. So we have installed that uh, into the DNN vNext project. Next, what we needed to do is we needed to, in the www root, directory, we needed to add a manifest.json file. And what this does is it has a few pieces of metadata in it to give the PWA a name, a short name, a description, and identify some icons uh, for the app. Um, if you're familiar with PWAs, um, they're, you, they run in the browser, um, but you can add them to your home screen on your mobile device um, and it looks just like it would uh, be an app from the app store at that point. So I needed to create uh, two icons for that one is 192 pixels by 192 pixels and the other 512 by 512 and I put those in the images directory here so we have an icon there and an icon there. So that was really all that needed to be done from, um, from that standpoint for the manifest to be included. Next, we needed to go to the startup.cs file. And here, we needed to add one line of code, and that is the services.addProgressiveWebApp. And this is utilizing the um, NuGet package uh, from Mads. Christensen. And th this is kind of the do everything in a default kind of way um, call. What you can do instead of just doing it this way, you can actually add the service worker directly and get a lot more granular control um, to, to, to do various things in there. But um, this was a great way to test it right out of the box. So that's really it. That's all we needed to do to this project. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run it. And this will launch it in a browser window, which I may have to uh, pull over. Yep, there we go. So at this point, um, I, I won't go into details of what's going on in this project and behind the scenes in the database. Um, there, there's actually a video out there already on that um, that uh, Andrew Heffling did uh, to demo this project. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus here on, you know, it looks exactly like it, um, as it should here, and I'll zoom out just so you can see the whole thing. So we can do the normal things, go to the demo, 
and we can see that I've already added several Razor Pages modules to the page and so forth. So adding a module and all that is still the exact same experience as it was before. Nothing has changed there. But the big difference is that this is actually running as a progressive web app. So how do we know that? Um, well, first of all, one of the things that I needed to do is in the project itself. And let me zoom back in here. I needed to go, I kind of had to fake the local environment out a little bit so that it would load the service worker. So I had to go to tools, options, and within here, um, I can do the search options, go to Chrome, and in the general settings, the enabled JavaScript debugging for ASP.NET uh, for both Chrome and IE is by default checked. Um, so in these projects, so I needed to uncheck that and that allows the service worker to actually load. So let me toggle back over to the app here. So at this point, let's zoom back out. Let's look at the page source. What you'll notice here is right here on line 14, we are, it is now linking the manifest uh, that, uh, that we added to the www root. Um, and it is named different. This is the way that the service worker handles the manifest.json file. So it's not loading the JSON file directly, but it's loading as a web manifest. And then the only other change uh, that we will be able to see here is down right before the ending of the body tag, you'll notice that there is a, the service worker is being registered on the client side. So that, that alone really kind of proves that the, the, the app is running uh, the service worker. So let's look at something else. Um, let's go into the developer tools, and I'll zoom back out here. And right now I've got this thing, uh, let me just go to responses so we can see it a little bit bigger. But let me reload the app here. I'm going to do an F5. And let's go to the application tab and I'm going to zoom back in here. So now if we go to the application tab and go to the service workers area over here, you'll see the service worker is indeed activated and is running. The other thing that you'll notice is in the manifest, here is the same information that was in our manifest.json file, and it even has the icons associated with it here. So it's loading all the information from the manifest. So yeah, our app is running as a PWA at this point. So um, this opens up all kinds of uh, possibilities uh, for the future of DNN, and um, the the I won't go too much into detail on how you know what the benefits really are of PWAs, but in short, um, it, just think of uh, a regular web app running uh, in a browser on a mobile device over a 3G network. The average go load time, according to a study done by Google, is 19 seconds it takes that app to, to load. Well, with PWAs, um, that gets us down to the three to five second range, which is uh, really where the goal is uh, these days. So I envision us being able to um, utilize uh, PWAs in the next version of DNN, you know, the, the .NET Core version of, of, of uh, DNN and uh, really leverage uh, web components uh, or custom elements uh, that are just HTML that work really great um, in the PWA context and deliver that functionality through there. So I uh, hope you have enjoyed uh, this and let me know if you have any questions on this. I'll be happy to, happy to kind of walk through it and, uh, and uh, talk more about it, but love to, uh, love to see where this goes. Thanks.